to present our next special guest. She's an American television host, author, and producer best known for his digital work with Awesomeness TV, and is also the host of Sugar Rush on Netflix, and a Mo Genius on Game Show Network. Here's with us, it's Hunter March. Hunter March! Hi, Hunter. How are you? Everything's good. How are you? Fine, fine, fine. Thank we're, you. We're great. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, so where are you guys from? I'm from Tijuana. Oh, okay. And I'm from San Diego, so we're really close to each other. It's just that right now we can't really be together. <laughs> yeah, I've seen your other interviews with you guys uh, doing it with the shared earphones, and I thought that was great. Smart yeah. use. Yeah, thank you very much for accepting the invitation and for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Of course, yeah. I'm, uh, you know, I've got some free days in quarantine every once in a while, so I might as well put them to good use. Got it, got it. Uh, we always start with this question because everyone wants to know what their favorite celebrity is up to. So, what have you done in this quarantine? Uh, what's my favorite celebrity? What? What? What was the question? Sorry. Oh, what have you done in this quarantine? What have I done in this quarantine? Um, oh, I started reading a lot more, uh, which is something I always wish I was better at, but I've gotten a lot better over the last couple of years. You know, I just trying to read for more than like five minutes without getting bored. And now I'm up to like 10 minutes. So it's pretty good. I'm, I'm doing really well. Uh, but I, I do, uh, I do a lot of painting and I do a lot of drawing and stuff. So aside from work, you know, E and Nightly Pop and all that, um, that's been a lot of my focus. And spending time with your family. And all oh, that. yeah. I forgot to mention them. Yeah, yeah. They're <laughs> great. They're, 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 I spend a lot of time with them. So I, my, my family, all of them live in Los Angeles in different areas. So I see my dad every week and I see my mom every weekend. And I probably talk to my dad every day talk to my mom every day, every other day. Yeah, I'm, I'm very close to my family. So thank you for reminding me. I almost got in a lot of trouble right there. <laughs> so Hunter, basically in this interview, we're gonna start talking about your career from the very beginning um, to everything that you've done currently. So that's what we're going to be talking about. And also towards the end, we're going to be asking you some random questions just to get to know you a little bit better. Sure, you guys, Unfortunately, there is a time limit because I have to go back. I have a, a call at 11 or 10.55. Um, okay, so that's fine. We could do this. Keep that in mind. That's okay. But I'm here to answer. I'll yeah. talk about my whole life. What, you know, let's, let's start at the, I was a baby, and I wasn't <laughs> a cute one. I was pretty ugly, according to everyone who saw me, because I was born, like, covered in hair, you know? <laughs> um, but eventually the hair just relegated itself to certain parts of my body. So, you know, I got, I got the full beard, no chest hair, and then <laughs> kind of hairy legs, but not too bad. Is this the kind of stuff you wanted to know? No, no, not really, but it's pretty good information for your fans, I guess. <laughs> I guess so. Some of my fans already know this information. <laughs> okay. So, our first question is, how did you start making YouTube videos in 2010? What, what made you start YouTube? Um, I started making 2010. How old would I have been? I'm 29, 20. I probably made YouTube videos before then, but they're private and you can't see them because okay. they're either just so embarrassing <laughs> or maybe like it was like a challenge that you just couldn't do these days. Like I did one where, I was impersonating like Valley Girls, you know, where I'm from in the Valley, the whole <laughs> oh my yes. God. And oh my God. I like in, in today's world and it, like with my, the fact that I represent different shows and stuff, I just, it's so much riskier to do anything right. comedy that isn't like super safe. And so yeah. uh, back then it was, you know, you didn't care as much. Um, luckily I wasn't saying anything crazy, but still like, you know, you get nervous. You're like, oh no. I wonder if I, if Valley Girls are going to get mad that I did an impersonation of them. <laughs> uh, but I did it, I think, because I just, I didn't, you know, I didn't have a lot of friends growing up. So for me, it was, I think it was finding that community and 
I, even more so than that, I just like to perform. And it was a place for me to perform and be seen by more people than just my mom and my dad, who I think were pretty tired of my bullshit at that point. Got it, got it. So how do you feel knowing you're following in your grandfather footsteps? Yeah, my grandfather was a famous game show host uh, in the 50s, 60s. And he, you know, I never met him, but it obviously, to be a TV host is a weird, random thing. It's not like I happened to play baseball and he happened to play baseball. It's like we picked full careers that were the same. Um, it feels really cool. I mean, I, I love legacies. I love the idea of, you know, these patterns in life. It's really just interesting. And so for me to have something like that is really cool. I wish I would have met him and, and been able to been given some advice or some guidance, but you know, I think I'm doing okay without it right now. Yeah. What made you want to start a career on television? Was it your grandfather being on television? Was it YouTube? What made you decide that you wanted to be on TV? Like instead of YouTube? Yeah. Um, I think everybody who's on YouTube would rather be on TV. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just, it's, It's a much bigger platform. I mean, there's so many reasons. It's a bigger platform. There are uh, bigger budgets. So, you know, not only just to get paid yourself uh, for the work you do, but also to have the budget to create better products. Um, like, for example, I can't go out and shoot a show like Sugar Rush in my kitchen. I can't shoot a show like Emo Genius, like 40 episodes of a game show. It's just, yeah. it's not possible. But when you have these budgets and the these amazing people, you also get to work with a higher caliber of person in terms of the behind the scenes stuff, the producing and the editing. And, um, and for me, it was always just, I like growing. I like, I like the next big thing and it's always driven me. Uh, and so TV was the big thing. And then it was like, all right, well now I want to be on Netflix. And then I got on Netflix and I was like, then I wanted a show every day on television. And then I got that with Nightly Pop. So it was a lot of just wanting it and getting very lucky. Yeah. I was, um telling some um a friend on an interview and we were talking about the same thing that you have things because you're you ask for them like right. you it out into the universe and it basically just comes right to you <laughs> yeah i think i mean i'm a big believer in um the power of confidence in kind of like being able to not only think that that's what you want, it's really important to know what you want in general. You know, there was a point in my life where I had a moment where I could have been like, I don't want to be an actor, do I want to be a TV host? And I specifically chose TV host. And that one decision probably made my life a lot better because being an actor is really hard. And, you know, so I don't look like um, the Spider-Man kid, you know, like I got, a, I, I'm just a normal looking dude. It's not like I've got this like weird boyish charm or these, this like jawline of a god you know so I, tv hosting was a little bit better for me yeah acting is something totally different we can definitely speak for that because we mm. both are in acting aside from our program on instagram and on facebook so it's like this it's pretty tough so i mean whatever door is open for us whether it's acting or singing because we also do that or if we get our doors open here as interviewers. I mean, it's, it's good either way. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. I was talking to my friend about this recently. He's a, he's a singer and it's something I think about, but it, at some point, if you want to be the best you can be at one of those things, you have to make a decision. Like, yeah. yeah. It's good to keep those doors open and see where the opportunities are, but do that with the mindset that at some point, you have to pick one because if you pick two of them, let's just say you pick acting and hosting, yeah. you, the maximum you could put into it is 50% of your effort into each exactly. of them. So that, that for me was a big decision and I wish you guys the best of luck with that very difficult Thank decision. You. Idea. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It is a tough one. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's a weird one. So we know that you have a book called TBH. Where did the idea come from? Um, I met with Scholastic when they were interviewing influencers to do books and I was definitely not a big influencer at the time, but I was 
passionate and I had a, a good idea, which was this chicken soup for this style, this chicken soup for the soul style collection of stories uh, from influencers, because I feel like as an influencer, we're all like, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old. We don't have enough stories to fill up a book, but mm -hmm. each of us has at least one really good story that we can tell. And, and, and the book really was that. I mean, there's so many incredible stories from people that I never even knew uh, had these stories. And then it came out and apparently selling books is really hard. So I didn't become a best-selling author, uh, but it was a really good experience. Really good. How did it feel knowing that you released a book, even though you weren't a best-selling author? Yeah. See, the, the competitive side of me was like, oof, maybe <laughs> just what could you have done? Um, but I mean, it's incredible. It's a dream come true to have a book by Scholastic, but it's funny. Every time someone brings it up to me, I always go, oh, oh yeah, I wrote a book. I forget. <laughs> like, it's so, so out of my mind. Um, and I think that that's also like the sign that my life has been very blessed and lucky and that that very large milestone was a stepping stone. Um, because again, I just have met the right, right people and been in the right spot and did the right work. Um, yeah. Uh, what was your experience like with Arsenal's TV? You guys are good at the whole back and forth thing. Huh? Does that ever get tough? Are you like, all right, who's going to say some shit now? No, actually, no. We have it all planned out all the time so that we make sure who says what and everything's evened out. <laughs> uh, that's good. That worked out really well. Yeah. <laughs> Thank um, you. So the awesomeness TV, what was the question? Sorry, I was just entranced by your guys' beautiful hosting style. <laughs> what was your experiences like? At Awesomeness. Um, at Awesomeness, it was incredible. I started as an intern. Uh, I had to drop out of college to, to do it. And I'd worked on so many sets before then that I had this really strong base knowledge of what had to be done. And I was just so passionate and so excited that someone gave me the opportunity to I mean, a big part of my life and a big part of my success is that I love impressing people. I love putting the work in to be like, I, I've always almost like romanticized this idea of being the youngest person at the company, the youngest CEO, the youngest blah, blah, blah. I think it's, you know, I've probably got some demons in my past that I'm trying to overcome, you know, and like not being liked in high school and stuff. I'm probably like, well, I'm going to show them that they're <laughs> successful. Uh, but I had a high school reunion like a year ago and it was like this weird thing of like, all right, no need to harbor any more of these feelings, buddy. You're, you, you're doing okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's never, it's awesomeness was incredible. Such a good learning experience. I got to be a part of every side of the industry and really figure out what I wanted to do and then get good at it. And something that you guys probably do is I had to set up my own camera, write my own report, shoot it, like press record and then hope I was in focus. And then I had to go and edit it and then I had to upload it. And I did that every day for like two years. So it's like almost 500 videos that I did all of that for every day. Each day was like a, you know, nine hour day. And wow. I loved it. Yeah, of course. We do it too. <laughs> yeah, we do it on here. And then we also have our own YouTube channels for our music. So it's like, we have to do it on our program, and then we also have to do it for our music. It's to keep a lot. Updated. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of work, but it's but definitely it's, worth it. It's a good tool to know how to edit the video, how to record, how to shoot, everything. Yeah, if anyone, yeah, like, a lot of young people ask me, like, All right, how do I do what you do? How do I get into the industry in whatever way, you know, they're interested in getting into it, but... I always say, and this is a lesson I got a long time ago, which is like, you don't want to ever just be a TV host or just be an actor or just be a singer. You're just a meat puppet. You know, you got someone else's hand controlling everything you say, everything you do. Learn the behind the scenes so that you're in control of your life. It's so much more effective and it makes you so much happier to know that you get to guide things the way that you want to guide them. I don't know. Starting out on your own is kind of like a blessing in disguise if you get to go higher 
in the industry that you're wanting because then you know like you did everything for yourself before you started so you already know what it's like at least a little bit yeah the problem is now that everyone i came from that i love the self-motivation i like the editing i liked shooting it all of it was so fun and then other people started doing it for me because it was a tv show and yeah. now in like my free time I'm like, are you fucking kidding? I have to go edit myself right now? No way. I'm going to watch TV. <laughs> oh like, I, I got spoiled, which I regret. You know, I wish I could go ahead and get that motivation again. But it's hard. Yeah. yeah, it's hard. This is my favorite question. Do you have any weird or funny stories while working at Awesomeness TV? Oh, my God. My whole life there was weird. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of what's like appropriate <laughs> not that there was anything too inappropriate but like you know a lot of it's like interpersonal relationship stuff within the company uh you know there was one time i basically became like the face of the company in that i would there's an interesting thing when you're young in a big company mm -hmm. and they have you have their trust it's almost like you can do in my situation, it's like I could do no wrong. I was just kind of like the golden child, and everybody that worked there knew that the bosses loved me. Again, I, like I think a lot of my ability to work in a place comes from like charm and just being able to make anyone feel like they're in control of the situation, even if I know that they're. I don't know. There's a weird dynamic there that I've always taken advantage of. Um, and there was a a Christmas party and we I wrote a roast for the entire company like where I roasted individual employees I roasted the bosses and I wrote the most deranged like messed up things to say about your own boss like uh inappropriate would be so bad you know to say but like it was in front of the whole company and they loved it they were like eating out of the palm of my hand and I think that that is just a a testament to if you have a good relationship with someone that everybody wants to get made fun of a little bit it's really fun but i told them i told my one boss that you know he he was a big director he was the ceo founder of the company and he had directed like a bunch of like movies like uh norbit with the one with eddie murphy wild hogs and so i mentioned all these movies and i was like all these movies AK movies that would lead you to a career in YouTube. You messed up, Brian. You really, you really <laughs> fucked up your career. With that. Oh my god! Yeah, and that that was like one of the safer jokes I said. Wow. In 2015 and 2016, you hosted Top Five Live. How was oh that? Boy, what a story. Um. Yeah, I hosted Top Five Live. That was a good opportunity. That was like. You know, I got to executive produce and host this live show every day, but it was uh, miserable in terms of no one was on the app that we were on, Go90. No <laughs> one was watching the show. It was just like we were struggling every day to get like 200 viewers. And then a year went by and right when we started, you know, figuring it out, they canceled it. And that's just life. You know, that that's what happens. You just learn. That was one of those things where... I looked back and was like, oh, I should have appreciated that opportunity more and taken more advantage of the money we had. Even though no one was watching, I shouldn't have cared about that. I should have used it as an opportunity to just try things and get weird and get experimental. One, I could have had really good footage for you know myself down the line. But two, it would have just been a real learning curve to been like, hey, let's shoot some stuff in a car. Let's shoot some stuff um, out on the streets. Let's Let me see what this is like setting all this up. Because I was running the show with a show right like it was you know i had all the power in the world and i just didn't use it to learn as much as i could have i love this show i was really sad when it got canceled i was actually there for one of them that's where wow. i met you yeah that's um, that's uh wild i met I you without the beard i met you without the beard um it was for before you exit and i remember i was so excited and for who? i for before you exit oh, okay and I was so excited. I left school early that day. I missed my last class. <laughs> and I was like, I have to go. Like, I just can't miss this. And my grandparents picked me up and my best friend. And we drove all the way to L.A. to go see you guys. Wow, that's really cool. I'm glad you got to uh, see the show. 
and I mean, I met some incredible people on that show because we had a celebrity guest every day. So, yeah, you know, I had everybody that has ever been an influencer on that show at some point, good or bad. You know, I, some people were assholes, but uh, that's, <laughs> that's every, you know, every group of people has that. So you participated in the Emoji Movie in, 26, in 2017. Sorry. How did the it's opportunity my... come up for this project? <laughs> that was my big break. My, you know, the one movie I've ever been in happened to be one of the most hated movies of all time. Um, I, it was because I was in a, a game show called Emo Genius, which was produced by a company that was a subset of Sony and Sony produced the Emoji movie. So it's just this thing where they're like, hey, you know, is there a role for Hunter to play? And by the time I got in, they had already done all the animation. So it's not even like I could do anything besides mouth it exactly the way that the character was mouthing it right and it was fun i got to go to the premiere i got to see my name in the credits i still get like residual checks every once in a while because apparently the movie does really well with like itunes sales um for kids and families it's fun can you talk i never saw it um but you don't it have to watch pretty it pretty interesting i was just like how did they make a movie with just emojis like it was just weird half of the this is the interesting part about television to me is like half the stuff i do is never something i would have ever envisioned <laughs> myself doing like i think it's all silly i think the whole media landscape is very silly it's such a self-fulfilling and gratuitous world but it's uh it's fun and you can't deny that being a celebrity in some degree and being able to perform for people uh is a really exciting opportunity but like one i host a you know baking show and i'm gluten intolerant i don't like the idea of celebrities like i think celebrities are all they should just not exist we're not very few of us are good role models and then i host a show on e-news you know called nightly pop and the emoji movie I, if you came to me and were like, you want to make this movie? I'd be like, I don't know, guys. Let's think about it a little bit. Is there not another <laughs> angle for an animated film? But I, again, I say that, and I absolutely love Sugar Rush. I love Nightly Pop. They ended up becoming my favorite things in the world, regardless of my uh, predisposition about them. But um, it's funny. It's just it, the world is a funny place. Can you talk to us about the process of recording? For the Emoji Movie? For the movie, oh, yeah. Yeah, it was just, you just went into a booth and recorded what the animated character was saying. Pretty easy, nothing crazy. Okay. How did you get to be the host of Sugar Rush? Did Netflix approach you? What was going through your mind when all of this happened? Um, I did uh, Awesomeness, and then that got me an opportunity to meet with Emo Genius, the game show I did. And that was the first TV project that was like a full season. We did 40 episodes and I had to test for that. So I went in and I tested and I got the part and I was very, very excited. It was my first TV show. It was 40 episodes. Uh, it was amazing. And then I was like, oh my God, I, this is going to be huge. And then it came out and I realized nobody has cable anymore. And so no <laughs> one watched the show, you know, like we had viewers but not enough to get a second season right. not the young viewers we wanted and it was an emoji show so it's like the old viewers who were on the network weren't like falling over head over heels for it it was a really good show like i loved the game i loved the puzzles it was entertaining people loved it people still watch it because it's on netflix but um it just wasn't it didn't land in the way i wanted it to and so afterwards i was like oh, i really want to show on a streaming platform so that i can tell my friends to watch the show and they can and then I got a call you know, within a month or two of, you know, or a few months of putting this thought out there. And Netflix wanted, uh, the production company, Magical Alps, wanted to meet with me and talk about a Netflix baking show. And I, I went and I met and I almost missed the meeting because I forgot about it. It was bad. It was bad. <laughs> I came in in like shorts and a t-shirt and I was sweating because I was like late. I was like so nervous. But I just told him, I was like, listen, I, I, I would have so much fun with this show. I'm not a baker, so I can be like a good uh layman right. for for the audience to kind of like translate all this information uh -huh. um and luckily then i went to met, meet with netflix and there was no audition it was just conversations okay. which i think for a host is kind of all you need and if you have like <laughs> real footage you know yeah. um 
And then they told me I got the part and it was like beyond exciting. But again, it's so funny, like all of these things in the moment feel like these mountains of, uh, of new opportunity and hurdles and everything. And then I look back and it's like the book where I'm like, oh, it happened. It's done. You know, it's like, <laughs> it, it's so, it's so, so much smaller in the rear view. Um, yeah. And I forget how undeniably excited I was, like just, I've never felt better than when I get a call. It's like, I got a call from my agent. My agent was like, how are you? And I was like, I think it depends on what you're about to say to me. Right when I should be finding out. And this happened for both Emo Genius. in that tone. Yeah, both Emo Genius and Sugar Rush. And she goes, well, I think you're going to be in a really good mood because you got it. And I was like, Whoa, this is the most exciting thing ever. I was so excited. I was jumping up and down. I was at Awesomeness. So I went and told everybody at Awesomeness. And everybody at Awesomeness was like, oh, my God. It was all my friends. They were so happy for me. Um, but it's funny. It's funny because it, it meant that uh, I could no longer be at Awesomeness, basically. You know, at, at a certain point, I had to start transitioning out. And that was, that was a fun moment. Sugar Rush is actually one of our favorite shows on netflix <laughs> we love it i love baking shows i love baking shows i'm a baker so getting to watch you on the show is so fun it's so entertaining we just we love it yeah it's amazing aside from hosting sugar rush you're also the co-host on nightly pop from e-network what's like being a co-host for such a popular TV network? Um, yeah, it's strange. It's weird, you know, because, like, I, in, in the beginning, when I first found out about the opportunity, like, he was like, hey, we want you to do this pilot for us. Like, I didn't have to audition, which was very kind. I met with them. They liked me. Uh, and then I got really sick the day of the audition, and I came oh, in, and I was so oh. sick that, like, on the day of the on the day of the pilot, they had all the cameras. We were going to shoot this thing that was going to be shown to the whole network, and then they were going to decide. No auditioning. On the day of the pilot, I get there and I'm throwing up like every six minutes. Like it was so bad. Mm -hmm. By the time like it came time to shoot, which was hours after we met in the morning, I was so sick that I had to have my mom come pick me up from my job shooting a pilot for television and I couldn't shoot the pilot and then next week I had to come back and test audition against like 10 really successful tv hosts and I still got the part so that was like a nice little like assurance but um it's been a dream come true E is like just it's a fun place for someone like me who doesn't take it seriously like I the the like glaze of celebrity to me is so fun to poke at and if you can make fun of celebrities anywhere e is such a fun spot to do it i watch e network religiously and i remember when i first saw you on nightly pop i was like oh my god it's hunter and i got so excited and i was so happy for you oh uh, thank you that's really kind <laughs> Okay, so, now we're on to the random questions. Okay. This is the fun part. <laughs> Are you go. ready? I'm ready. Okay. Okay, first question. What movies or series do you recommend to us? Um, I really like, I mean, I kind of have like a darker, more introspective taste for television. So I really like like Afterlife, the Ricky Gervais show on Netflix which deals with mortality and depression and all that. Like to me, I'm like, yeah, this is a fun Friday night viewing. <laughs> um, and then also Fleabag on Amazon Prime with, uh, I'm forgetting her name right now, uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Okay. She's incredible. She's one of the greatest minds ever. And she wrote and produced and directed this beautiful and acted in this beautiful series. Uh, I really love... And then if I'm like trying to like, you know, let my mind go, I'll watch like Avatar The Last Airbender recently. Pretty good. Pretty good show. Now on Netflix. All of it's on Netflix except for the flea bag, but that's on Amazon Prime. Not the movie, right? Or yeah. The what series. was that? The series. They're all series. Yeah, those are all, all I'm not a, I don't watch as many movies or at least remember as many movies. I'm more of like a T 
see these things are what I remember because they have a larger chance of imprinting themselves on me. Right. Okay. Who's your favorite singer? Singer? Singer. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I like classic rock. So I like, like, you know, Jimi Hendrix. I like uh, Van Morrison, I think, is a really good singer. But more modern, I would say. Daniel Caesar is a pretty good singer. Ooh, love him. Yeah, Daniel Caesar is amazing. I'm really into, you know, this is a really obscure one, but you'll enjoy it. Go listen to, like, Jaden Smith and Willow Smith's latest albums, and they're fantastic. Willow Smith? Like, wow, she really grew up from Whip My Hair to now. To all these it's amazing, insane. like, the, the song it's Wait a Minute, and she's like, wait a minute. Yes. It's so oh good. my god, I'm obsessed with that song. It's so good. Yeah, she's great. All of her music's really good, surprisingly. I'm gonna listen to it. Please, so you have since, to. Since you mentioned that you've been reading a lot more, what's your favorite book? <laughs> my favorite book is The Fall by Albert Camus. He's a French existentialist. So it's kind of like this like philosophical book, but told in this really interesting way, like one monologue. But he just, he, to me, he writes in this way where like every, every other page I have to dog ear because I'm like, I want to remember that forever. But I would dog ear every page, except <laughs> now I've dog eared every page. Like that's how good he is. And every one of his like beautiful lines, I'd go, oh, I quit. He just wrote such a good thing. I would quit and be like, I did it. But that's every other page. It's so good. Oh, okay. Um, if you could be a superhero, who will you be? Oh, wow. I feel like the creepy guys all pick like Invisible Man, you know, the real <laughs> creepos do that. I would say, and like the insecure guys all pick, you know, like the Hulk or uh, <laughs> Superman, because they got, you know, tiny little bodies. Um, I would say, you know, Spider-Man, I just think he's, it's a cool, it's a fun superpower to have. I, I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. It's actually one of my main cosplays because I am also a cosplayer along with Luis. We're both <laughs> cosplayers and Spider-Man is my favorite cosplay. I love that Spidey suit. I just, I could live in it. I really could. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm jealous that you guys get to play like that. <laughs> it's fun. What's the weirdest thing you have in your room? Um, some paintings I have are pretty weird uh, <laughs> that I've done. But like, you know, done. This, I've done a lot of drawings. Like this was a girl who wanted me to draw her, but she had like a fleece coat on. So I just made her coat like into the sheep that the fleece oh was made God. of. Oh <laughs> That is it's, a little it's good. It's really good, though. Yeah, yeah. It is good. Thank you. This girl wanted me to make her a cyborg, so I made her. This is like, you know, these are really oh, quick drawings. Why? Quick drawings. I don't the, know. The, the lamb <laughs> one took me like a solid 15 minutes, but this one, like, I, you know, I do some like weird stuff that I just enjoy. <laughs> okay. Th those are actually really good. Thank you. Yeah, that's that. What are you scared of? Um, I don't know, not much, honestly. Like, I like all types of food. I like, uh, you know, the only thing sometimes I'm scared of is I, I want to achieve a lot. And I, uh, sometimes my, you know, like, I, I've worked really hard for large periods of my life. And then other times I fall into these funks of being like, all right, I'm just going to coast especially as people start doing more things for you. So like my fear would be that I look back on my life in, you know, 15 years and go, dude, you could have worked so much harder. You could have had so much more success and set your family up in a better way. But I also think that that might be an irrational fear a little bit, you know, cause I'm doing, I'm doing okay right now. Yeah, you're, really you're doing a lot. You, you are pretty successful with what you got right now. <sighs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. What's a place you'd like to visit? Uh, Tijuana and visit you uh, 
TJ and, and just have a, a very nice time and, and see see the see the country. It'd be nice. Well, you should definitely come down. We'll we'll take you out for a good time. <laughs> I'll let you know when I do. Okay, good, perfect. Good. Um, what can you cook? Everything. You have one. You have thirty more seconds, so let's get them out fast. Okay. okay. When you're not working, what do you like to do? Uh, I like to read. I like to hang at the pool, beach, all that. Um, do you have a secret talent that you, that no one knows about? No, my whole life is public, so it's all <laughs> except for the inappropriate stuff, you know. But I can't share that on this. Got it. And last but not least, what's a word that you use a lot? Uh, I. It's funny. I like saying "oof, oof." <laughs> a girl recently DM'd me and she said "oof," and I was like, oh, "I'm in love with you." Uh, <laughs> so that's good. That's my word. Okay. Well, that's the end of the interview. Thank you so much for being with us, Hunter. Thank you Thank for you, Hunter. letting us interview you, for letting us get to know you a little bit better. We really do appreciate it. You have been a joy. <laughs> oh, thank you guys. You guys have been great. Keep doing what you're doing and uh Hopefully, I'll see you in like five years, and I'll be like, I remember when I did an interview with them, and I'll look at them. They're hosting the Grammys. Thank you. Oh, hopefully. Hopefully. Well, enjoy your guys' day. I can Thank find the picture. Too. I don't know, Lily, if you have the picture. I Text don't. It to me. It's on my phone, but we'll post it on our Instagram. We'll yeah. send it to you. All right. Well, thank you, Liliana Louise. Thank it was really so nice much. hanging out, and we'll talk soon. Okay. Of is it course. Louise or is it Louis? What? Luis? Luis. Luis, okay. yeah. Liliana. Yes. <laughs> All right. Luis, Liliana, have a beautiful day, and we'll talk later. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you Bye, sir. Bye. Bye. Bye.